Good evening and welcome to Connecting Point. I'm Jim Madigan. Opioid addiction and overdose deaths remain at epidemic rates in our region. Recently, Northwestern District Attorney David Sullivan and Marisa Hebel, Director of the Opioid Task Force of Franklin County and the North Quabbin region, came in to discuss the problem and some of what's being done to try to turn things around and save lives. I think that we're making progress. Uh, you mentioned the numbers, almost 1,300 deaths. Uh, just imagine 10 airplanes crashing last year with 130 folks on board, and that's how serious it is. And so the opioid painkillers and heroin have really seeped into our Western Mass community. It was always here, but it was below the surface. Uh, but we've, uh, in the last five years, tripled the number of people that have died from these opioid overdoses. So I think we're making a lot of progress with prescribers. We're getting the word out. The Governor Baker and his working group was superb in making recommendations. But to turn this ship around, it's going to take a long time. We really started with all these opioids being plentiful, these painkillers for 20 years, really being liberally prescribed. Um, insurance companies really wanted doctors to give a month or two months supply. And so now we're at that point where we're really working to turn the ship around and really get people into the mode where we don't give opioids where they don't need to be prescribed. Let me ask you about, we, we seem to have a sense here in Western Mass that the problem, and, and this is everywhere in the country, this is everywhere, but we seem to have a feeling here that it's particularly acute. Is it just because, is it the media? Is it just we're paying a little more attention? Or is there really, do you feel, and you represent a lot of communities of varied sizes, but certainly some very small rural communities. Is there more of a problem there? Is there something more intense? Is there something different going on? It's real. I mean, the stereotype and the, uh, the assumption was it only happens in cities. And now it's gone beyond that because in the Northeast, uh, you've seen it hit every age group, every geographic group, every gender group. And what we're seeing is that this multiplication of overdose deaths is actually uh, corresponding with how many overdoses there are. So for every death, there's probably nine or ten overdose uh, incidents where people live. So we're really looking at a real tsunami. Uh, it's not an exaggeration when we lose that many folks uh, in a year in Massachusetts. We have a serious epidemic on our hand. Marisa Hebel, let me ask you, you said something so interesting as we talked for a minute before we started tape rolling. You're, again, you're directing the Opioid Task Force in Franklin County, North Quabbin, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I mean the biggest community you've got there is Greenfield, about 20,000 people or so. You're dealing with a lot of small communities, and as you said, when you've got a community with 1,000 or 2,000 people in it, everybody's family. So when this happens, mm. this really hits home, doesn't it? It really does. You know, the, one of the challenges in a rural community, especially a county like Franklin County, you know, we're the second poorest county in the state, and so that means that we're dealing with the opioid crisis similar to all the other counties across the Commonwealth, but with less resources spread out over a bigger space. And that presents some really significant challenges, both on the prevention side, so making sure that people have jobs and access to primary care, and you know, there's challenges there with transportation, but then also on the recovery side, when people are re-entering the community after treatment or after being incarcerated, if they did something related to their addiction, that presents some real challenges to the recovery support that people need being spread out over a rural region. And then if you add in, you know, when two people die in a rural community, everyone's connected. You know, it's a very, um, the ripple effect is really felt quite significantly through, uh, through a rural region. And that's our communities all across the Commonwealth are experiencing this ripple effect. There's really no denying that we're in the midst of a significant crisis. I want to talk more about that support system in a minute. But DA Sullivan, let me ask you, the, the thing that strikes me, and you touched on this a bit in your first answers, this is an unusual addiction problem, it seems to me, because the vast majority of these people were on legally prescribed medication, pain pill for an injury, an illness, a surgery, whatever it might have been. And then when they get past that illness, if you will, these very strong drugs have taken hold of them, and they now need to get that drug or something like it wherever they can get it, and that's where the illegality and the pusher and the trouble comes in. This, this is so different. It's, it's a problem our society created, really, through science and, and medical advances. Well, Purdue Pharmaceutical uh, produced OxyContin, and um, when they, it came onto the market over 20 years ago, it was touted as a miracle drug for pain, and it was also touted as non-addictive. Well, 5,000 years of opium addiction tells us that that's really not going to be very true. So not only are the people who are legally prescribed, 
But it's really been that diversion. It's that reach into the medicine cabinet uh, by uh, a younger person in the home, or it could be a caretaker that um, is coming into the house, and that's where that abuse is coming as well. So we're really looking at an epidemic that was started by liberal overprescribing, also that diversion. And one of the things we've really worked at, hard at in our district is to collect all these unwanted medications, any kind of prescriptions. So we just had our drug take back, and with our permanent boxes, we have them in 17 police stations around the district. Uh, we've collected almost 25,000 pounds of unwanted medications. So just getting them out of those medicine cabinets can really prevent that abuse from ever happening. What about the pharmaceutical and the medical professions? Getting across to doctors, to prescribers, to pharmacies, there's a problem here. Watch this, watch who gets this, because you know people physician shop, they pharmacy shop, and what seems like one little prescription here, if you're doing it five or ten times around the county, you got a big problem all of a sudden. We've made tremendous progress with uh, the education of uh, doctors and dentists and other prescribers uh, by having what we call scope of pain. Dr. Ruth Poti, who uh, has really been a champion for educating doctors on safe prescribing, has really come on board. We've uh, trained over 600 pharmacists and prescribers uh, and their delegates in the last three years. So we've made tremendous strides. And the CEOs of the local hospitals have been tremendous to understand that it's a real problem that sometimes starts in a hospital but also ha can be prevented at the hospital. Let's talk about it at the community level where I think you're working in Franklin County in North Quabbin. You've got families, and this becomes not an individual addiction problem. This becomes a family and a neighborhood and in some cases, a community problem pretty fast. Absolutely, it does. I mean, like I said, the ripple effect through the um, through the community from this particular addiction is is really significant. And this is a complicated problem. So it's really it's significant that we look at this in terms of prevention, intervention, treatment, and recovery. And that everyone, every sector of the community has a role to play and every sector of the community must play it. So law enforcement needs to do something different than our hospitals need to do. Our schools need to do something different than our parents and families and people in recovery need to do. But everyone needs to play their role. This is so complicated that if we don't come at this with a comprehensive strategy, we're, we're not gonna make as much of a difference as we can if really everyone is on board. Both our task force, uh, our Hampshire Opioid Task Force and also the Opioid Task Force of Franklin County, North Coabin, the best committee we started was healthcare solutions because we're looking at this as a public health crisis and we're also treating this addiction to opioids uh, for what it is an addiction. It's not a crime to be addicted. And so we're trying to change the whole attitude toward this as being a chronic illness. Just the way we treat diabetes or heart disease, that families that are suffering uh, with a, a loved one who has this addiction um, can come forward and get the help they need. The biggest barrier from what we understand from all the national surveys is the stigma. Mm -hmm. That we always called people junkies or addicts and we didn't really look at them. Uh, we looked at it as a moral feeling as opposed to what it is. It's a disease of addiction. So we're trying to change that attitude all the way through the community. So that's why our opioid task force really work hard to go into the community and let people know you can come for treatment, you can get recovery, and we're going to welcome you back into our community. It's not a crime to admit you need help for a disease. And we have really emphasized through the Good Samaritan Law, if anybody ever overdoses uh, and you're in the presence of that person, you can call the police. It's not a crime. So we want people to really understand that help is our number one objective in getting them into treatment and then long-term recovery. Let me quickly uh, go ahead. I was just going to jump in and add that one of the things, if there are families who are struggling, one of the other important things that families know is that they should have Narcan at home. This is a chronic relapsing disease, and just the same way people with diabetes have an ice cream sundae and relapse from their food plan, someone with, um, with an opioid addiction may very well relapse, and that may be part of the natural process of getting sober. So it needs to, we really need to all families to know that they need to have Narcan at home. And currently, Walgreens and CVS in Massachusetts have a standing order, which means that someone can walk in and uh, purchase Narcan either for free or for a low cost um, and, and have it home and have it have it with them. And that is really, that is the miracle opioid antagonist, isn't it? It, it, it saves lives immediately if it's taken Narcan. It does. It's unbelievable how many saves have happened in our district uh, over the last four years through Tapestry Health, through our local police. Um, it's, it's the miracle drug that 
that knocks those opioids off the, uh, the receptors in the brain and allows that person to start breathing again. So we've tried to get it into the hands of every first responder, and like Marisa said, uh, anybody who has somebody who's high risk, who's uh, used in the past or maybe presently, um, to really go down to that you know, local Walgreens or CVS and just go in and get it. Mr. Attorney Sullivan, Marisa Hebel, thank you both for what you're doing. Thanks for your time with us. Thank you.